Hello, Memo Chams. Welcome to the Memo Read. Myself, Pratikyam, your biology semi. I hope your Brahmastra test series 2 went really well. And to those who don't know what exactly this Brahmastra test series are, here is a quick explanation. See, Brahmastra test series, basically, it is a series of tests which has been conducting by the Memo Read app. Uh, it covers both 11th as well as 12th syllabus simultaneously so that, you know, there will be the burden of preparing at the very end or the peak time will be reduced. And the second thing is it is purely based on NCRT textbook and NTA syllabus according to 2025 need. So you'll have a clarity of which topics are very important and what kind of preparations you need with respect to need 2025 examination. And the very second important thing of this BTS series is uh, we have our own Telegram channel. So where every update has been there. Uh, so the Telegram channel link you'll get in the description. So please, if somebody has not joined or new, please join to the Telegram channel. You'll get in all the information regarding this BTS test series in the Telegram channel. And moreover, uh, once you give the test, right, so it is purely based on, you know, OMR kind of thing. So you'll also get used to the, uh, you know, the way of test preparation pattern and all. So once you fill your OMR with the right answers and all, you can have a snap of it and upload it to the memory tab. So immediately your score will be displayed. So based on that, you'll be getting to know like what is your level of preparation. We have a mistake board also in the app where it is going to show exactly which you have attempted and what went wrong uh, in both physics, chemistry, as well as biology. So in that way, it is going to show which topic you need to focus more and in which topic you are very strong. So in this way, you know, all overly, you'll have a track of preparation. So this is all about the master test series. So still, if you have any confusions, that's what I'm saying. You get into the Telegram channel. So that everything is there. Every information, bit to bit information regarding this Babra Master Test Series is there. So yeah, go get utilized of this. So now, what is the plan for the Brahma Master Test Series 3? So basically, the first as well as second part will be combined as the, in this Brahmastra test series three, right? So that means you are going to give a test for all the three chapters which you have covered in the first as well as second test. The first one is the living world, then the class biological classification and sexual reproduction and flowering plants. So in these coming videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize the entire chapter, uh, uh, this entire uh, chapters. Okay, bit by bit, and I'm going to take some of the questions which uh, I feel you might felt tricky or somewhat confused and all. Even based on that, I'll try to cover the entire, uh, you know, chapters, okay? And if you feel any questions which are tough in Brahmastra test series uh, or else in uh, basically, so you can comment, uh, you know, or you can message in the comment box and uh, believe me, I especially going to answer your questions. So make use of it and coming to the very first chapter again. This is a revision class. So that is the living world. So what is living world? Basically, I have been uh, referring it from day one that what exactly the living world is, right? So living world means we have millions of living organisms which is present on the earth and all living organisms, individual living organisms, they represent a particular species, right? Millions of uh, you know, living organisms which is present on the earth and all individual living organisms that represent a particular species. So till now they have estimated or they have been approximately they have described or the known organisms or species that is described ranges between uh, so ranges between 1.7 to 1.8 million species that is yet described okay and this together that is all these different species together it represents the biodiversity right so when i'm talking about the biodiversity always remember biodiversity is nothing but the number and the type of living organisms which is present on the earth refers to the 
biodiversity. As I said, there are millions of species on the earth, different varieties of species on the earth, right? So each varieties of species naming is not easy. So, you know, when you go to the different area or different locality, what happens? The name of those individual species also changed based on the locality. So that's why what happened, it is really impossible for us to remember all those different names to the one species or specific organisms. That's why a proper naming is very important where that naming should be known or accepted worldwide. And the one specific organism should have only one specific name. So that uh, will let us easily to understand and study about those specific organisms. So how do we do it? So there is a particular process or there is a particular, yeah, there is a particular process of naming these organisms. So that process is act actually called as nomenclature, right? So when I'm talking about nomenclature, obviously, when I'm talking about the nomenclature, you cannot give naming as it is, right? So there will be a scientific way or a proper way of naming a species or organisms in such a way that that name has been, you know, accepted all over the world by all over the biologist and that has been universally, uh, you know, described everywhere. So how it is being done, it is through identification. That means you cannot name as usual, right? So particular identifying the organism is very must. So therefore to describe the organisms correctly and we know that to what organism the naming is. So that is actually done through the identification that is through the proper ID identification. So there are basically two uh, different organizations which not, uh, take care of these things. So one of the questions has been asked in the Brahmastra test series that is the scientific name of the mango and brinjal. So mango and brinjal are the animals or plants, basically plants, they belong to plants, right? Anyhow, so they are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided by that means the scientific name to the mango and brinjal, which, organiz which organization is going to provide the scientific name to these two uh, organisms. So since uh, there are two basic organisms in the textbook, like basically in your NCRT syllabus, one is ICZN and ICBN. So another ICZN, that is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, and ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature, right? So these are the only two organizations which they have given. So option two and option three, you don't need to see this because nowhere in the textbook they have mentioned about the about this thing. So now it is very clear this ICZN, that is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, it is going to take care of giving a scientific name to animals basically. So remaining is the plant. So ICBN, that is International Code of Botanical Nomenclature for Botanical Nomenclature. So it is going to take care of giving a scientific name to the plants in a proper way, right? So therefore, the proper app option is option three. So therefore, what happens when it is about giving scientific name to organization that are going to take care of it? One is ICZN, International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, ICB, and that is International Code for Botanical Nomenclature, okay? So this scientific name ensures in such a way that each organism is being called by only single or individual scientific name, and that is not repeated to any other orga organisms, okay? So that is the major function of these board, that is these organizations. So this is all about the very first topic. So, yeah, I just wanted to make you one thing before getting into the second topic. See, basically when you are naming uh, organisms that is in a scientific uh, way, so two things should be kept in the mind. So that is each name or each sign, uh, name, uh, name of giving the organism the scientific name. So there will be two components will be considering. So what are those two components? The first one is generic name and the second one is specific 
epithet or the species name. So first will always be the genus and the second one will always be the species or, or specific epithet. So this is clear. So these two components will be considering while giving a scientific name. So there are specific rules and regulations also while you are giving the scientific name. For example, uh, we will take an example of mango. The scientific name of the mango is Mangifera indica. So here what exactly this Mangifera and indica represents? The Mangifera represents the genus name whereas this indica represents the species name. So in this way, uh, you know, two components are being uh, present and based, based on these two, uh, keeping these two components itself, the scientific name is given. So this is since the two components are used, hence we normally call it as biological or binomial nomenclature. Binomial naming. That means you are naming based on by is two nominalist components. So that means you are actually keeping two components to name an organisms. Hence, it is actually called as binomial naming. So I hope you are clear with the binomial naming. So there is a set of rules or regulation, you know, basically before naming uh, while writing a scientific name. So what are those set of rules and regulation? So in the next question, what I have asked you is uh, regarding what are the follow uh, which of the following is against the rules of ICBN, see International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Since you are taking this thing, so basically when you are naming a, a scientific name, so there are set of rules and regulations, right? So what are the set of rules and regulation? Here you have a clarity of it. See when I'm talking about the ICBN or ICZN, right? So very first thing is the genus name, the biological name. The very first thing is when you are naming a living organisms, what it should be. Uh, first thing is the name that you are going to take, right? It should generally be in the Latin. And it should always be written in italics. So this is first point. The second point, uh, okay, this is all about the first point. So the first, uh, like whatever the name that you are uh, taking from the Latin, it means that the, the organism scientific name is actually being derived from the Latin and it represents that it their origin, okay, irrespective of its origin, whether it is from India, whether it is from any other country, it doesn't matter. So whenever you are naming a scientific name, the name has to be from the derived from the Latin word itself. And when you are writing it in an italic forms, so italic forms, right? So that may that shows that the origin is from the Latin word. The name is actually taken from the Latin word. This is your first point. So what about the second point? The first word in the biological uh, name, that is the name of unliving organisms, it always represents the genus. While the second word, it represents the species or the specific epithet. Okay, this is about the second. So whenever you're writing a scientific name, okay, always the first word of the name will represent the genus and the second word will represent the species or the specific epithet. So this is the second law that has been, uh, you know, considered. And third one is when you're writing the both, okay, that is biological nomenclature, when you're handwriting it, you have to make sure that uh, it has to be underlined separately or when or else while you are printing it should be in a italics form that means for example you are taking an example of mangifera indica so when you are writing a mangifera indica so make sure you underline it separately this indicates okay this one is the genus and this one is the species okay belongs to the species so you are underlining it separately. This is the rules or else when you are typing, okay, you should always type it in an italics form. So that's the scientific name should always be typed in an italics form. This is the third point. And the fourth rule is, okay, while you are writing, make sure that the genus starting word should always start with a capital letter. And the second word that is the species should always start with the small letter. Okay. So you cannot do it vice versa. Like you cannot write the capital word for the species and the small letter for the genus. No, that should not be happen. 
So these are the four things that uh, need to be kept in mind or they will be considering while giving while uh, giving a scientific name to the organisms. Okay. So the last thing, always remember that, for example, Mangifera indica, uh, what do you say that, Lynn? If a scientist or suppose I or you or any scientist or any biologist, okay, they have discovered it and they have named it. So that means the credit has to goes to goes to them, right? So because they have discovered it, they have named it. So we should obviously give a credit. So at the end, you know, the one who has discovered or described the scientific name of an organism can be given. For example, Mangifera indica lin. So at the last, Lin has been mentioned. Lin is nothing but the scientist that is the biologist Linnaeus, the one who has described this, uh, you know, uh, Mangifera indica, that the, the one who has given the scientific name. So after the genus and the species, that is after the end of the biological name, you are going to write the scientist name, that too in a short form, abbreviated. So this is how we are going to describe. So these are the basic rules that you need to keep while naming a scientific name to a specific organism. So now which of the following is against the rule of ICBN? So these are the rules of ICBN. I think you are very clear with this thing. So handwritten scientific name should be underlined as right. Then every species should have a genetic name and the specific epithet is again right. The scientific names are in Latin, but that is your, you will be taking it in a Latin and while you are printing, it should be, Ital uh, it should always be printed in a italics, right? So the third point is also right. So the fourth point is the generic and the spe uh, specific uh, or the species name should be written starting with small letter. See, starting with a small letter, no, starting it should always write from a capital letter. So whenever you are writing a generic or the genus name, it should start with the capital letter, whereas the species name should start with the small letter. So this statement is wrong. So which of the following is against the rule of ICBN now? The fourth statement is wrong. Uh, so as I just uh, mark this thing here, see, you'll get this thing from the uh, Brahma PYQ, NTA PYQ. So this question was actually asked in... I need 2019 okay which is actually a direct uh, statement from the NCRT line see this question I have actually taken from our NTA PYQ book of the memo need so you can see the question how they have uh, you know written so they have given the question they have also mentioned from which year this question has been asked and uh, whether what kind of question it is, whether it is direct statement based question or whether it is match the following question or whether it is, uh, you know, a kind of graph manual question. So detailedly they have explained you what kind of question has been asked. And even you can see here, the answer is also been given a small crisp explanation that is nothing but a very small explanation. And detailed explanation is also given. So where you will get the in, uh, in detailed explanation of it. And at the end, you can see that they have also given a shortcut way of memorizing these all four, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, the rules of the biological nomenclature, universal law of nomenclature. So in this way, everything is found. And at the end, you can actually see that uh, like uh, from which uh, chapter they have been asked, and what topic they have been asked and which page number in the NCRT textbook you are going to find this. So everything has been detailed explained. And these kind of detailed explanation you will only get in the NTAPYQ of the Memonit. So why I'm preferring you to take this NTAPYQ book of the Memonit is because you'll have an idea about since it consists from 2019 to 2024, all the questions are covered and they've been segregated based on the chapter as well as topic wise. Okay. So you'll get an idea from which chapter maximum number of questions they have asked and again on which topic they have asked. So in that way, you will be able to understand the mindset of the NTA and you'll have a clarity about how you can concentrate and what topics you need to concentrate more. So next, coming to the next question. Yeah. So next thing is, as I told you that, uh, okay, naming has also been done. Everything has been done. Since it is nearly impossible to study individual living organisms, right? 
so it is necessary to devise some uh, means to take the possibility in which we can actually learn about the living organisms so this is actually called as classification so when you are when i'm talking about the classification classification is a process of grouping of any organisms okay uh, anything uh, you are actually grouping them into convenient category okay based on some of the easily observing characters and all so this is actually called as classification for example if i take about a plant or animals obviously when i uh, say a plant you'll definitely recognize the plant right how because of some of the characteristics of the plant plant it has flowers it has leaves and all so when i talk about animals so i'll be recognizing animal itself because of the easily absorbing characteristics right so in the same way if i take an example of mammals such as dog or cats so obviously when i uh, say something dog the dog picture only comes in your mind and when i say something about the cat the cat picture only comes in your mind so why because of the easily absorbing characteristics that makes you to differentiate between the dog as well as cat so here the question is all about okay so the scientific term of the categorizing these organisms is actually called as taxa okay so here you have to recognize the taxa that indicates that the a category at a different levels that means when i'm talking about the tax it indicates the organisms at its different level so hence based on the characteristics all the living organisms can be classified into different taxa this is actually called as taxonomy i hope you are clear the taxonomy now see there is a question like cat and dog have some similarities reason cat and dog belongs to the same family Canidae. See what happens is you have to know this. Assertions they have asked here that the cat and dog have some similarities. So you can actually see some of the similarities between the cat as well as dog. But the reason they have given is because they belong to the same candidate. So you have to identify the following statement. Which statement is wrong? Something like that. Okay. So yeah, if both assertions and reasons are true and the reason is the correct explanation of the assertion this is one point that means here both this assertion as well as the reason both the statements are true okay and this reason is actually a correct explanation to this that is what they are saying at the first uh, first option the second option is if both the assertion and the reasons are true but the reason is not the correct explanation of the assertion that means both the statements are true but this is not exactly the correct explanation reason is not a correct explanation for the assertion that is what they are saying in the second statement so in the third statement if assertion is true but the reason is false that means this assertion is actually true but the reason is false that is what they are saying and at the fourth that is the last statement they are saying that if both the assertion and reasonings are false that means both are not the correct statement that is what they are saying see when i am talking about the dog as well as cat what they are saying they have similarities right so yeah so here see this cat basically it belongs to the family felidae you are getting so cat belongs to which family felidae so what about the dog now yeah so and i'm talking about the felidae family f e l i t a e felidae so they are closely related uh, related to such organisms like tiger okay L leopard then lion so uh, that is felidae family it closely belongs to these kind of organisms okay and this dog actually belongs to the canidae family so now see the cat and dogs have some similarities that's true but what is the second statement reason cat and dog belong to same family canidae see here the cat actually belongs to the family felidae where the dog belongs to the family canidae so that means both doesn't belongs to the same family you are getting both doesn't belong to the same canidae a uh, same family but what happens 
both belongs to the different family here okay thus they are not related to each other so if both the are true and reason is and the reason is the correct explanation of the assertion if both assertion and reasons are true but reason is not the correct explanation of the assertion so you have to uh, you know choose the very correct one if assertion is true but the reason is false so that is this assertion is true they have somewhat similarities okay but the reason is false if both assertion and reasons are false assertion is correct okay so that means this option is wrong so if both the assertion and reasons are true remember both are true they are saying no so this also is wrong if both assertion and reasons are true again this is wrong see this Assertion is true. Obviously, it is true. But reason is false. So, that means option 3 is the correct answer. You got to know difference between uh, this cat as well as dog. They don't belong to the same family. But yes, they belong to the different family. But there are some similarities based on fur, gloves and all that I'm going to discuss uh, in the coming one. This is what I can take on it from the Brahmastra test series. See, in which of the following pair of category, greater is the difficulty of determining and relationship to other taxa at the same level. Thus, the problem of classification becomes more complex. See, before what happened is human beings know what they were interested to know the relationship between the other organisms and how exactly we got evolved and all and their evolutionary thing and all. So afterwards, these uh, like human beings with time being, they started getting curious and they were willing to know exactly the relationship between the, uh, you know, each and individual living organisms and their evolutionary history. So this was later on named as the, the study was later on named as Systema. Okay. So Systema, Systematics basically. and. Uh, Carol, Carolus Linnaeus, the one who started giving this biological nomenclature, right? So he used this, uh, he actually gave a name to his publication. That is, he has been, you know, discovered and described many scientific names to the living organisms. And later on, he published those all things. So the name to the, his publication was actually given as Systema. Nature. Okay, so this was the name which he gave to his publication. So the scope of the systematics later on it included identification. Then nomenclature. Then classification. I think in Telegram channel or in the WhatsApp group, some question, some student randomly asked this question. Uh, like, what is a way of, you know, giving the scientific name to an organism? That statement was. See, yeah, first thing is you have to identify. Like, first thing is characterization. Then you'll identify the living organisms based on characterization. Then you are going to nomenclate. Uh, that means you are going to give a scientific name to these or organisms, right? And based on their characteristics and all, you are going to classify uh, the living organisms or basically the, whatever the organisms you have discovered. So yeah, characterization, then identification, then nomenclature, classification is a way like how we, uh, the organisms has been divided. Anyhow, so yeah, how exactly you'll be dividing this classifying the organisms based on the taxonomical hierarchy. Okay, or taxonomical category can also be uh, given. Yeah. So first thing that comes to the category when I'm saying is uh, from the lower category to the higher category, that is how we are going, right? So first lower category will be the species. Okay, then species is followed by genus, then it is followed by family, then it is followed by order, then it is followed by class, 
ഫൈലും ഫൈലും ഓർ ഡിവിഷൻ and the last one is kingdom so whether the kingdom that is whether it belongs to animal kingdom or plant kingdom that is the last so from lower category to the higher category this is how normally it goes so there is a statement always you should remember that higher the category that means from the lower category as you start going to the higher category what happens greater will be the difficulty to determine the relationship to the like other organisms okay to the other tax are the same level that means as you keep on going to the higher category what happens now determining the organisms become difficult for example you have the smes three smes you have who are actually taking the classes right now in the youtube right so one is biology sme rithik sir is there then chemistry sme aprajita ma'am is there and for physics sme shakti sir is there so what happen is when you are actually talking about the sme of the mammonite right it becomes very easy now for example if you are talking about particular sme or for example biology sme ke bare mein baat kar rahe ho so you have rithik sir so you can easily say uh, you can easily describe rithik sir based on the physical appearance so and based on what the way he actually you know covers the entire syllabus the way he explains and all so these minute characteristics you can say okay about individual now if i ask you to say the characteristics of all the three smes together without dividing okay based on biology how they do chemistry how they do physics how they do i'm not saying that i'm actually saying you to give the all over characterization of the three smes together it becomes quite difficult because all we three smes we have our own method of explaining right so now you feel difficulty in the same way when you are dealing with the species you are actually dealing with only one particular organisms so it becomes very easy to explain its characterization and all so again when you go right to the genus you are actually dealing with like two three more organisms again in the family you are dealing with more organisms then order more organisms with similar characteristics class phylum division or kingdom so again this all things happen so as you keep on moving ahead okay as the high as you start moving to the higher category what happens it becomes greaterly difficulty to determine the relationship of one another so that is what it means so even this question explains the same thing so when you see this i add the genus as well as species it is anyhow in the lower uh, category itself next tribes and genus that is family and genus again it is somewhat in the lower category next division or phylum division and phylum it comes here then species and family where it is yeah these things species as well as family again it is somewhat in the lower category so now after saying from the lower category to higher category which upholds in the higher category phylum and division that is phylum or division phylum and division right so that means it is actually placed it is the higher category so as the statement what it i said as you keep on moving to the higher category greater is the difficulty to determine the relationship to both the tax are the same level so what might be the answer now division and phylum so this is clear now moving to the next part that is which of the following arrangement of taxonomical category of house fly is correct in descending order so before going to this question as well as this question i really want you to see this chart okay that is you will get in the textbook that the same chart itself i have uh, put here that is table 1.1 where they have taken the organisms with their taxonomical category so they have actually taken basically the man house fly mango weed where they have given its scientific name that is the biological name genus family order class phylum and division okay so these thing you have to concentrate like what is the scientific biological name genus family and all so if you know this chart very well if you mug up this chart very well then only you will be able to answer this question so coming to this question which of the following arrangement of the taxonomical category of house fly is correct in the descending order so you know right what is ascending and descending order so here you have to concentrate on the like based on the descending order 
see the first thing is uh, here you can actually see the housefly its biological name is mucosa domestica then its genus is mucosa then the family here the order is diptera then class insecta phylum arthropoda this is how they have given and it goes from the lower hierarchy or lower category to the higher category now right so now by seeing this thing when you are talking about the taxonomical category of the housefly the correct uh, descending form will always be it belongs to the kingdom animalia that is from the higher to the lower you are going right now okay then which art phylum arthropoda uh, then it belongs to insecta then the Ptera, Mustidae, then last one is Mucosa, right? So this is how the descending order goes. That means, say so this is the normal category from ascending to descender. If you are talking, this is how it need to go from lower to the higher category. But since the last descending order, that means from higher category to the lower category, it has to go. So that means housefly belongs to the phylum arthropoda, then class insecta, order diptera, family mustidae, then all genus mucosae. Biological name is obviously mucosa domestica. Okay. So this has to be right. See, out of all this option, which option is correct now? The first option is correct. The second, third, or fourth option is somewhat twisted or somewhat here and there it is present. So the second, third, and fourth option is wrong. Because arthropoda is fine, immediately they are taking annelidae. So annelidae comes the first because it, it's the kingdom, right? So it is the highest category. So what they have taken? They have taken arthropoda first, then animalia. So obviously the statement is wrong. Animalia, then they have taken insect, the order. Again, the statement is wrong. Diptera, they have taken. Again, the statement is wrong. So, this statement is correct. And see, you will get this kind of explanation in the uh, BTS test series. Okay, BTS 1 test series, you will get them. So, where they have also explained in detail. And also, they have tagged, uh, you, there will be a link. If you click on to that link, it will directly take you to the NCRT uh, line where exactly the statement is present. So, these kind of facilities you'll only get in the memo need. I, I, uh, like, I hope you'll utilize it, okay? I hope you'll realize it and you'll try to utilize whatever the facilities that it has been given. Anyway. So even you have a video solutions also, if you feel anything which is dog, you will also have a individual for each and every question. There is a video solutions. So you can have that video solutions also. The next question is, which of the following combinations is correct for wheat? So this is all about the wheat now. So yeah, genus, family they have given, order they have given, class. So before that, we'll go to the wheat. Okay. So by this table. So in the wheat, you have. So the genus name is given. Then the family is given. Order is given. Then the class is also given. Phylum is also given. Now by seeing this thing, you have to identify which one is correct. Okay. Yeah. Try to identify. So genus they have given. What is the genus now? Try. Yes. So genus is correct. So the second one is family. What is the family here? The family is. See, first one is genus. Try to come is given. Then family. So what is the family? Because we see is actually given. Then coming to the order, police is given, right? Then the class is that and the phylum is also that. Phylum or division is also that. Monocotyledon is the class and phylum is angiosperm. So by, by, by these all, keeping these all characteristics in mind, you have to see which of the statement is correct. So family, anacardacea is that which is wrong. It belongs to some other family. So first statement is wrong now. So genus, 
ट्रैक्यूरम इज करेक्ट फैमिली इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट कमिंग टू द ऑर्डर ऑर्डर इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट क्लास इज डाइकॉटिलीडॉन इज इट इट बिलोंग्स टू विच क्लास एक्चुअली मोनोकॉटिलीडॉन्स राइट सो डाइकॉटिलीडन एक्चुअली द मैंगो बिलोंग्स टू डाइकॉटिलीडन सो द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग कमिंग टू द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट द जीनस इज करेक्ट द फैमिली या वट इज द फैमिली हियर नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट ऑर्डर या ऑर्डर इज रॉन्ग नाउ सो ऑब्वियसली वॉट हैपन्स द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग बिकॉज ऑर्डर बिलोंग टू पोलेसी ओके सो कमिंग टू द जीनस कमिंग टू द फोर्थ स्टेटमेंट जीनस इज करेक्ट फैमिली इज करेक्ट ऑर्डर इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट एंड द क्लास मोनोकॉटिलिडन इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट so it belongs to the fourth so even in main exam and all they might ask you these kind of statements okay so for that you should know the following common name below and what are the genus family order class as well as phylum so if you know this all things you will be able to you know analyze what exactly the statement is and you will be able to give a proper answer even a small minute confusion can lead you to you know attempt for the wrong answer that's why please be thorough and perfect with this chart okay yes coming to the next one which of the following belongs to the family must be so this is actually the question which was asked in 2021 and i have taken this question from the pyq nta pyq of the memoni ta so what are the questions which of the following belongs to the family must be dead same so does it belong cockroach house fly firefly grasshopper so the option is house fly okay it belongs to the phylum must be dead why because they have explained it very clearly see if you go here obviously house fly actually belongs to the phylum must be dead right so there are no other options which is that that can similarize that it belongs to the mustidae family and i have explained it very well now uh, in a very small way that i have explained in a crisp explanation so if you really want to know it in a detailed explanation i have also explained a detailed explanation for each and everything so that does that have explained regarding the house fly then what is actually the fire family must be day consist of and what about uh, other options right so even we need to concentrate what about the other options like cockroach it belongs to the other order where it doesn't belongs to the must be day in the same uh, way this fire fly it belongs to the family lampreyate so it doesn't belongs to the must be day family and grasshopper also it belongs to the other order that is orthopoda uh, peta orthopoda and not the mustida so therefore only house fly is the one which belongs to the family mustida so if you want to have a you know a kind of shortcut answer even they have explained it in a graphical or pictorial way even in a pictorial manner they have explained see with the diagram very well beautiful diagram they have explained so they have also referred like from which uh, you know lesson it has been from which topic and which page number in the ncert textbook you will find so that is what i have explained you so this is all about the questions so basically what i have did uh, in this revision thing is have taken only few questions from the brahmastra test series 1 as well as nta pyq book then i have tried to explain you everything about uh, the question as well as answer and with that i have also covered the entire syllabus okay in a very brief manner so what all the things or uh, what all the things that you should concentrate us first thing is you need to concentrate on the classification okay then nomenclature rules regulations of nomenclature taxonomy then a hierarchy uh, you need to know the taxonomical classification okay so what about the lower tax and the higher tax category is all things and the table which i have shown you that also you need to concentrate these are the very basic things that you need to concentrate and i believe this living world is very small chapter and it's a very easy chapter only thing is you need to memorize them
uh yeah this one quick uh in uh you know one of the very important point that i want to add before ending this revision one is see we have nta pyq book what is this nta pyq book is it is a series of questions that we have gathered from me 2019 to 2024 and all the questions have been segregated separately based on its chapter as well as the uh topic wise so what are the benefits if you have the NTAPYQ with your with it is so yeah it is been explained detailedly chapter wise as well as topic wise so and okay you have the only book in the market where you will be getting the crisp explanation as well as detailed explanation with we have also referred from which uh, you know topic which page number of this NCRT textbook you are going to get. So I don't think in the market, you won't get any of the book, which is in this manner, the way I have uh, showed in the previous one. So another very important thing is if you really feel any difficulty of understanding question, there is actually a barcode, okay? So if you just scan to that barcode, it will directly take you to the, if you scan this barcode, it will take you to the video solution part where, the SMEs of specific topics that have explained that question and answer in detail, okay? And in TAPYQ, it covers the entire NCRT textbook and uh, if any newly added syllabus is there, that is also been added and deleted syllabus have been removed. Since you'll be very confused because in market and all, even before 2019, questions also they add up okay so obviously nta is it, it's somewhat different when compared to the cbsc pattern and all so if you have the nta pyq book definitely you'll be able to understand how the questions are what are the patterns of pattern and which topics more questions have been came and believe me if somebody is studying 11th as well as 12th standard even you can use this book for your theory aspects also Okay, because we have explained it very beautifully. The book has a very beautiful answers that it is something, a very basic and important guide before you enter into the, before you go to the 2025 NEET examination. If you have this and if you keep on revising it every day, you know, easily you'll be able to crack this 2025 NEET because you'll be understanding every concept, every aspects that what I be, uh, believe, okay. So this was all about the leaving word. So in the next video, I'll be explaining about the biological classification in the same manner. I'll be taking some of the questions and I'll be covering the entire syllabus together. So tell if you feel any doubt or any queries and all, please feel free to reach me out. So you can message, you can put your message in the comment section or as you can also, we have our telegram channel, okay? So you can also get to the telegram channel and you can uh, ask questions there also. Regarding how do you get for this Brahmastra test series and all, yeah, please feel free to get into the telegram channel and you'll get all the information about it. Yeah, keep watching.